Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fearful avoidance self-sabotaging patterns in relationship dynamics. So we're going to talk about why this happens sometimes and really what it's rooted in and how we can reprogram a little bit of those core roots and fears that are often leading to these patterns and dynamics so that we can have a different outcome long term. So before I dive into this, we are still doing our With You sale to support our community during all the uncertainty that's going on. Um, it is for three, six, and 12 month bundles. It's 25% off as well as single course purchases. So you can take a look at the coupon code in the description box below. It gives you access to all of our roughly 40 courses, four live webinars a week, Every workbook comes, every course comes with a full um, workbook. And now we have this community-based um, thing that we're running. So basically we have attachment coaches who are actually in there on video call with people going through morning and evening routines, belief reprogramming exercises, group social, so we can have a lot of like like-minded people actually connecting in there, which is like one of my favorite things about all of this. So um, coupon code will be in the description box below. You can check that out and let's talk about this topic. So first and foremost, one of the reasons you will see fearful avoidance self-sabotage relationships is almost always to stay safe. And this is something that's so subconscious for a fearful avoidance, it's almost unconscious. It's almost irretrievable. Like it's almost hard to even access. And, and the way we can see that a program is running is if it shows up in our behavior when we're not necessarily able to, to super emotionally relate to it. So I'm gonna explain what that means because it's a really important point in just a moment. But what I want you to first know is that there's no actual such thing as self-sabotage. Everything that's self-sabotaging is simply a subconscious strategy to get different needs met that our conscious mind isn't aware of or didn't intend for. So for example, you might think from a conscious perspective, I want a relationship to work and to last, but your subconscious mind, if it goes, well, relationships are scary and they make me feel unsafe, your subconscious mind might be more focused on pushing somebody else away to try to maintain your own safety. And your conscious mind cannot outwill or overpower your subconscious mind. So what can happen is we're self-sabotaging, but really our conscious intention and subconscious priorities are not aligned. And the subconscious programs will always take precedence over time. Okay, so I just want it to be super clear. It's a really important dynamic. And this is like literally something that applies to everything. Why people fail their New Year's resolutions, why people struggle to achieve their goals. Literally, this has everything to do with our conscious and subconscious mind being in alignment. Now, sometimes for fearful avoidance, they have much deeper, more unconscious programs that are so deeply rooted in such an inherent part of their experience that they're hard to like actually retrieve at the emotional level, but if you look at your behaviors, you'll find, oh my gosh, I definitely behaviorally am coping to avoid this. And this is, these are the two programs that I see the most for fearful avoidance. I am unsafe and I am bad. So fearful avoidance may not relate to the feeling of like being a bad person or to feeling unsafe in the world, but if you look at your behaviors, Oftentimes you're pushing people away or doing things to try to create safety. And sometimes you're over protecting yourself in a way that's actually attacking other people. Um, and the root of that is not to try to attack someone. And I don't mean like physically or anything. Of course, that can be something, but I'm, I'm more talking about like verbally. But usually what's actually happening is beneath that you are, it's like the best, what's the quote? It's like the best defense is a good offense often like fearful avoidance or over attacking actually is a strategy to defend themselves. And this is often coming from feeling not protected in certain ways in early life or in a past relationship or in, in the different forms that created the fearful avoidant attachment style to begin with. So that's a really big piece that's important to be aware of. And the I am bad, 
often fearful avoidants are going out of their way to try to seem good, to try to do good, to try to, you know, do the right thing, all these different things, because they're so afraid of the guilt that they would feel with being bad. So those are two core beliefs that you'll actually be able to probably less relate to emotionally and be like, oh yeah, I think about that all the time. But it's because it's just more pushed down. It's like more deeply rooted in your subconscious to the point where it's almost unconscious. And when we get into unconscious territory, that's like really the territory where things are much harder to retrieve. So that's a really big component to be aware of. Now, when we look at how this all applies to fearful avoidance and self-sabotaging, what we'll often see is that fearful avoidance self-sabotage relationships because it's actually a subconscious strategy to stay safe again. So the biggest trigger I see for a fearful avoidance is the moment they feel like trust is broken, the moment they feel um, like they're they're not able to connect and be heard in a relationship, um, or the moment something is actually threatening them in some way, um, like taking their power away and making them feel trapped, things like this. These will be these really pivotal breaking points for fearful avoidance. And they may not even notice this, but usually from that moment forward, when somebody's crossed that line, that's when a fearful avoidance is like out of the relationship. And you know, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's good to say, nope, I'm not putting up with anything in a relationship. If, if somebody is going to break my trust in any way, not okay. But the flip side of that is sometimes we can get so all or nothing about it that sometimes really small things can be made into much bigger things and they can trip these wires of feeling unsafe. And then a fearful one can close down so deeply and profoundly altogether that sometimes fearful ones can get locked in this path turn, I was going to say path, but like pattern in life of uprooting their lives and going from one thing to another, one thing to another, one thing to another. And that can be a relationship, that can be a job, that can be friendships, that can be all these different things. And part of it literally happens the moment there's a big violation to feeling safe. And again, it could be that somebody lies to you about something and you're like, okay, that's it. It could be that somebody actually does something that's like more, um, maybe somebody lies about something small, like, you know, why they didn't call you back in time, or maybe somebody lies about something big. Um, and, and then we have to sort of assess, like, is this something that's a solvable problem or not? And so fearful avoidance of this pattern of like wanting love, but being terrified, it, terrified of it at the same time, and basically overprotecting themselves against threats largely because that was their subconscious experience in childhood. They had to deal with things that maybe were things they were exposed to that made them have to grow up too fast or figure things out too quickly. And they're used to being outside of their comfort zone and then having to overprotect. And the, these will literally be some of the patterns that keep replaying over and over again. And sometimes we don't recognize them because they're occurring in different forms externally, but it's actually largely that same internal programming that's running and functioning. And so when feelings elevate for a fearful avoidant as well, because if, if a fearful avoidant is in a relationship and they have really strong feelings, then they have extra sensitivity to things going wrong too, because it scares them like, whoa, I can't handle all this emotion. Because if you believe at a subconscious level because of your past experiences that no matter what, relationships are gonna end in being unsafe or hurt or betrayed. And then to feel so much for somebody means those, those programs, the belief in how much you'll be hurt, how much you'll be betrayed, those feelings seem to magnify with it. And so a big part of how you can heal this is to learn, um, how can I get my needs met for feeling safer in a relationship? Will that be through more communication, through talking through things more effectively, through having more transparency as like a norm in my relationships, um, through being more vulnerable, um, through moving more slowly through a relationship so I can sort of see and assess red flags as they come and try to see if they are solvable problems. Um, and a lot of it as well, from a deeper perspective, will be reprogramming the stories that you carry about relationships. And I have a really great course in the school um, called Overcoming um, uh, Jealousy and, and Transforming Broken Trust. And a lot of that has to do with the broken trust from our internal trust baseline. A lot of fearful avoidance have a fragmented internal trust baseline because of their past experiences. And then they bring this into their um, adult relationships. And it's very hard to relate in a healthy way when our baseline of trust has been fragmented. And so there's ways to repair it by really like finding out what the core beliefs and stories and narratives are that you carry around trust, which that course helps you to recognize and then doing the reprogramming work and plugging that into reprogramming tools to reprogram those stories and those beliefs. 
And it's not mutually exclusive to like being cautious and being thoughtful and considerate about the decisions you make or the path you go along or the people you trust and bring into your life. But it's, it's not going in with this deeply programmed set of beliefs that says, I'm going to be betrayed no matter what anyways. And so that allows us to have, you know, more room and space to see outside of our fears and perspectives and have healthier patterns and relationships, which ultimately makes relationships more sustainable and healthy long-term, which when that's happening and we have really healthy, empowering dynamics and ways of relating between two people, there's less likely to, people are less likely to want to violate that. They're like, oh my gosh, this is great. Why would I ever risk it? And so people respect and honor relationships more when there are naturally healthier patterns within it. So um, you can, I have other videos on this channel about reprogramming your subconscious mind, but what I would advise for that space in terms of just a high level of reprogramming your internal trust baseline, dump out on paper, write out all the painful beliefs you carry about trust, all the fears you have about what it means to trust people, what will go wrong, what you think will happen that's bad, where these come from, and then you can plug them into the different reprogramming tools I mentioned on this channel um, to break through those things. And that's going to save you a lot of time and effort and energy spent later in going through the stressors of a relationship that you can spend now to really have a healthy um, baseline so we don't feel the need to push people away and potentially sabotage. So I hope this all makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel, and I will see you in the next video.